of the On The Mic Podcast with my MMA news. I am Mike Pendleton and welcoming back to the show. First time in a long time and uh, very excited to talk to him. He will be back in action on June 21st from Salt Lake City. I'm trying to make it happen. I'm trying to get to that uh, event for uh, PFL round two. Is one and only Josh Silvera. Josh, welcome back. How are you, man? What's up, buddy? I'm good, man. Good to be back. Yeah, be absolutely, back. man. And, and listen, I let's get right into it. I know the last fight against Sadubu, obviously, kind of very anticlimactic. How much and in PFL, it's it's weird, right? Because in, in other pro sports in America, you don't really care what happens. You're like, we got the dub, move on to the next. With PFL's format, I'd like to believe that, like, that's the first thought is. Doesn't matter. Got the dub on to the next. But how much does it like excite you to get back in there and show just what you're truly capable of doing and, and all that you're able to do inside the cage? Yeah, you know, it was a weird, like you said, it was a weird fight. Um, obviously, the PFO format is like the point system. So I, initially, you know, I was like a little upset because I wanted to kind of, this is the second time this has happened to me where I take a guy down and he hurts himself. Um, I was a little upset at first because I wanted to, like, show, you know, like, Sadi Boo is a tough opponent. Kind of wanted to show the show the world, like, hey, man, you know, uh, you could you could move up a weight class as a champion. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same type of vibe over here. You know, I wanted to be that initial, um, you know, stamp on that. But um, just it worked out, it, you know, uh, you know, once the fight was over, my dad got in the hockey. He saw I was a little upset. My coaches were just kind of like, yo, this is part of the game. Like, you didn't do anything wrong, you know? It's just unfortunate that happened to him, but we got six points. We won. You know, we're in a, we're a, a great way to start the PFL season, right? No damage. Um, got my points. Um, obviously, I wanted to, to show what I've improved on since my, my finals fight, you know, and, and kind of like show where my mind's at, where my body's at, but Hey man, I'll take that. Um, at the end of the day, a dub's a dub, especially in this format. Um, you know, and I, I kind of had to repeat to myself over and over again, like he broke his finger because you took him down. You didn't do anything illegal, you know. So I kind of had to kind of, you know, at some point, you know, um, it kind of has to fall on him too. You know what I mean? I, I've I've known, and I'm not saying that I would fight with a broken thumb too. You know, I don't know. I've never happened to me. But um, I've seen guys go through things, you know. Obviously, a thumb's more manip, like it's more of like a solo finger chilling, hanging out on the side by itself. So I, I don't know exactly where his head was at. But at the end of the day, a win's a win, man. So a uh, great way to start the season. Absolutely. And what, what, I mean, you kind of just touched on it, but can you take me through like what your mindset was? Cause like you said, you want to show improvements from, you know, you know, the finals last year, you're welcoming a former champion to a new weight class. Were you thinking going into the, the fight against Sadabu that this was the perfect way to kick off 2024? Um, yeah, you know, in, in a weird um technical way right yeah like, yeah <laughs> look at it from like from a warrior's aspect like you know I, i'm gonna always beat myself about it uh about like i could have done this or i wanted to do that i wanted to submit him i wanted to beat him up but i think from a technical aspect of like you know uh injuries and injury you didn't do anything illegal um take it you know, I think any fighter in my position would would take that W too. You know, I, I don't think anybody would be like, nah, don't. we'll go again. You know, I don't think anyone's going to do that. You know, so I try not to beat up myself about it too much. Um, but it is it is what it is, man. I, and, and I sent Saudi Boom a message right after. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm sorry things went like that. You know, I know you're a great fighter. Uh, you're a champion. Um you know, I'm sorry how things have worked out weird, man. I just hope you could be able to recover and, and come back and fight round two, you know. And and he he is matched up uh for the 21st. So, you know, all all good vibes to him and and I hope everything works out well. Well, you drew Rob Wilkinson here in the second round. So now that we had this anticlimactic first fight, how even more excited are you? And is Rob Wilkinson the right opponent stylistically for you to be like, all right, now I'm really going to show everyone. 
the, the improvements and skills. For sure, for sure. I think I think there's different ways you could look at this fight, you know. Like if you look at Rob's career in the PFL, you know, he's been on he's been on a run, you know, and big guy, mean dude, punches hard, you know, he has all the attributes, right? Um, obviously he ran into that hiccup last year. So um I don't care who you are. If you're doing things like of that manner and you take it away from your, you know, you take that away from your body, you're going to, it's going to affect you, man. It's like you're putting an engine that doesn't exist inside a car, you know, when that car is not going to run as fast. Now he still, he did well, you know, like not, taking nothing against from him. But I think as a matchup wise, um, it's a great matchup. It's going to be a good fight for, for me. For me, this is kind of like a playoff fight. You know what I mean? The crowd's getting a treat. Um, but yeah, dude, this is this is where um you look back at your career and you think to yourself, like, do you you want to fight the best? You want to be part of that circle? This is what we're gonna have to go through, you know. Um, like I said, he's 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 experienced, man. He he's won it before. He uh has never lost in the PFL yet. So I think this is like a, a good moment for me to really show myself, like, hey, um you know, that guy in the finals, you know, it was just a moment of my life, you know, the guy who took Sadi Boo down, that was just a weird moment, but this is really what I'm capable of, you know, and I think the fight with him, it's going to be a great fight, man. I think it's going to be good. I think if you look at his PFL career, um, he's never really had a moment where he was kind of pushed in a way, you know, so I'm looking forward to doing that, push, pushing him and, and, uh, seeing what happens out of it, you know what I mean? Just just making him work and, uh, you know, round two of the playoffs, you know, you got the number one and number two guy going at it, you know, so I'm I'm not the matchmaker. I don't, I don't, de- you know, I don't, I'm just the guy that I show up on the fight night. So uh, PFL, you know, they have their way of doing things and uh, let's, let's get after it. Uh, I'm happy. I think it's going to be a delight for the fans. Obviously, I know you're excited. I know I'm excited. I don't want to ask on that because I've seen a lot of stuff on social media. And without going too far down the rabbit hole, you've been with the PFL for a while. Would you like to see, let's say, next year in a tournament where, whether it's a random drawing, or whatever it may be, to be fair, that we introduce seeding in these tournaments? And, and while you have to go based off of points, at least seeding you could make it a little more where you kind of leave the matchmakers out of it and we just follow the seeds. Yeah. I mean, I think that's how sports work in general. When you look at other team sports, you know, um, but obviously um, PFL is an organization like anyone else. You know, I think, I think when you go look at the political side of it, I think some of these guys and nothing, nothing to throw PFL under the bus, but I think these guys don't really, they don't, really care about that system they just want to have a big show at the end of the day right so if you look at the late heavyweight division you got four previous champions you got impa shoe face rob and sadi boo you know i think if i were a pfl matchmaker or a guy that you know makes organizes how they want the event to go you would probably want those four champions pushing through the playoffs, you know, regardless of whoever had a story, whatever the case is, that's what you want to push, right? That's what you, what you analyze that you think society is going to like, you know? Um, But at the end of the day, I'm not in control of that stuff, but yeah, that would be, that would be interesting, you know, go off of like the seating, um, you know, like in, in any other sport, me and Rob wouldn't necessarily be fighting right now. You know, we would be going, uh, we would be matched up later on. You know, we would be matched up like all the other guys, all the other guys in the light heavyweight division, they're all fighting guys with zero points. We're the only ones fighting each other with six points. So regardless of the way that you want to cut, cut the cake, you know, this is just, this is what the PFL is doing, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and come and be like, oh, you know, why do I got to fight a guy with six points? It's not, that's not my job. My job is to, I signed a contract at the beginning of the year, knowing that those guys were going to be in the tournament. You know, that's the beauty about PFL. Maybe UFC and other organizations, they, they slide a guy, uh, they, they give, a, they give you a name and you could say, oh, I'm hurt or I don't, um, not, not in shape. There, there's a bunch of ways you could 
you could avoid a fight. And in, in the PFL, it's, if you avoid a fight, you're just basically t- taking yourself out of a tournament, you know? And uh, the tournament's all we got, man, to make some good money. So at the end of the day, like I said, I'm a fighter. Um, and I want to be able to tell my old self, like, you know, you beat, you beat guys like Rob Wilkinson, Sadi Boo, you know, and I want to be able to look back in my career and know that um, I did everything I could uh, against good guys too. Absolutely. And I think that's been the narrative with a lot of fighters in every division, you know, about round two matchups and stuff like that. But like you said, fighters will just show up. Fighters like yourself will just show up and do, you know, the the job in front of them. So (laughs) with that being said, and I'm not, I'm not saying at all that you've lost sleep over it, but how much of every training day of every day you wake up, do you look back at the finals last year and just tell yourself I'm using 2024 to not only get back to that spot, but to get to where I, I didn't get last year and win the belt and win the grand prize. Yeah, man, I look back at it and it's, it's almost like, it's like when, when things happen in your life and you're super sad and upset and then somebody comes up to you and they're like, you're gonna, you're gonna kind of laugh about this one day. You know, you're gonna kind of like, not necessarily laugh at it, but you're gonna laugh about how far you've come in from, from that day, you know? Um, obviously, when I lost in the finals, it felt like it would never end. But, you know, at some point, that sadness is like, I'm choosing to be sad today, you know, so get over it, you know. And, and for me, it was like MMA is so, such a big sport. But the next, the week after of that, that finals fight, it was like a UFC, I think Kobe and Leon Edwards or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that was the next event. And I watched it. I was like, look at me. I'm already watching this other event. Like my events, the past already. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things like they're important for us as an individual, but life moves on, man. You know, life is just one of those things where, yeah, it's sad, but is it going to be sad tomorrow and the next day and the next week? I was like, at some point, you got to pick yourself up or you're going to be this grumpy dude thinking that you should have won something, you know, or I could have try to find all these excuses in the world, you know, but, um, at the end of the day, man, I'm just happy. I'm, I'm part of it again. And I, I got a job, especially with all this, uh, people buying another organization, fighters getting dropped, you know, I'm blessed, man. Uh, I'm blessed to be here still and, and compete and, uh, have another shot to, to win a million. You know, it's like, I could go buy a lottery ticket every day and I'm not going to have the, the the same type of percentage that I have in this in this department where I could win this thing you know I could actually go win this I, I've made it to the finals I know what it takes it's a long season um but I think the biggest takeaway from the finals fight I I've learned more about myself is that fighting's not everything I do it's something that I was raised in it's something that's been a part of my life but it's not who I am and I think it took me 30 years to realize that because my whole life I thought this was me. This is who I am. I am a fighter, you know, where I'm not. I'm, I'm Josh who, who fights. I'm Josh who's blessed enough to be part of a big organization. But um, I got a dog that I like. You know, I like going to the beach. I have friends. So I think that was the biggest takeaway because the PFL season is every eight weeks. So you'll 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 fool yourself. You'll lie to yourself, and you'll you'll forget about your life, just so you could, you know. Just so you could t- try to convince yourself, hey, I gotta win. I gotta win. I gotta win. And it's like no, man, you gotta win. But at the same time, you gotta live, you know. And I think that loss. It sounds cliche, but that loss really helped me change different angles of my life, you know. And something that you truly believe in might not necessarily be the best thing for you, you know, and you got to kind of take a step back and reanalyze your life. So that loss was a blessing. Absolutely. I know you do DJing as well. So Josh is DJ. So yeah, exactly. so, many, like yeah, so many things that you have going on and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just a few more questions here from me. If, if everything went according to plan in, in your eyes, would Impa be the guy you want to meet in the finals this year? Yeah, man. You know, I think, <laughs> I think any, I think any fighter would love to uh, get one back, you know, and I honestly, I like Impa, man. Impa's a great guy. Um, when I look back at it, like I'm happy 
that um you know i'm not happy i i lost but i'm happy that that was the guy to do that you know he's honorable um he's like god's guy you know what i mean he has always these nice things to say and i don't think he's trying to lie about it either. i think that he's truly like that you know and his parents are foreign too which i which i like um that he came from a, a background of of you don't know how life's gonna go but we just gotta we gotta work you know so i think at the end of the day that would be i would love that matchup i would love to get that one back um but i'm not focused on that right now you know i'm focused on uh just looking ahead man one fight at a time you got wilkinson you know and get into these playoffs man and then uh who knows man maybe info might be the next guy who, who really knows I think the world would like to see that matchup again. And uh, like you said, Rob Wilkinson first. That's why I'm trying to get to Salt Lake City because I know I want to see you and, and Rob square up inside the PFL Smart Cage. Every fight, whenever there's a feature on you, obviously, as you know, before we started recording, we spoke about your dad. It, it's well documented that, you know, the relationship you have. We talked about it at length last time we talked. Uh, how much as each fight goes on in your career, as your career advances, are you grateful, obviously, that he's your dad and your coach and all of that, but you you embrace building your own legacy with him by your side? Yeah, dude. It's honestly, it's it's a it's such a blessing that it's because it's like it's like anything in life when you start with an idea, right? The idea is is in our mind, right? That's for free. We could create anything in our mind, you know. And then growing up, doing jujitsu and like at first as a kid telling him like, I want to fight, you know, and maybe in his mind, it's just like, ah, you're just, a, maybe he thought that I'm not sure, but maybe he thought in a sense, like, you know, uh, yeah, of course you want You want to be like dad, you know, and then you start going deeper, you start doing jujitsu and you get kind of good. And next thing you know, I'm wrestling. And then I go back, Hey, I'm going to do this. He's like, Oh, now it's now he's kind of like understanding that I really want to do this now, you know, and then, now I'm wrestling in college. When you go look back at the journey, you're like, whoa, I really spoke this into existence. You know, manifestation is a real thing. It's a real thing. And it starts off with a little idea in your head. So um, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome for me. And I think it's awesome for the world to see, you know, that uh, we're taught as kids, you know, grow up, do something you love and go be whatever you want. Now, nobody ever really thinks like, hey, I want to grow up, do what you do, and then I want you to be by my side. You know what I mean? Um, just a cool thing, man. Uh, out of all the things I could have tried to be in life, you know, I go pick this path and and I have him by my side. I think it's an awesome experience. Um, you know, when I have kids one day, I think they're going to be inspired to to keep, you know, family close and you never know what the world's gonna what's gonna offer you, you know. It's a journey not many get to uh, have, and I, I'm happy, obviously, that you followed in that journey. I gotta ask you one, not related to yourself, but related to your gym. Dustin Poirier coming up well, with a uh, title fight representing yeah. American Top Team. How do you like Dustin's chances against Islam Makachev? Man, you know Dustin. He's to to first off, man. He's kind of like the inspiration at the gym. You know what I mean? When you look. Like he's a fighters fan for sure. And he's become the world's fan too. But when you really think about what he's done to me, he's a champion already, man. You know, this guy doesn't, he really don't got to fight no more. He doesn't have to, if you look at his resume, he's done what he's done. But man, when, when you see him walk into the gym, man, you, you almost feel like, like, like inspired right away you know you know what i mean like maybe you're having a bad day then you go look at him and he's still in there you're like <laughs> this guy's been in here for years and years now you know like non-stop um i think it's a great fight i think that's the type of fight that a guy like dustin looks for you know i think the last fight against the french dude it was kind of he was kind of risking risking his status i guess right but um i think he proved to the world like hey don't you can't mess with the top dog you know and top dogs have to fight top dogs and i think i think man in the perfect world man uh, he 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 beats islam and 
and maybe I don't know, maybe retire. I don't know. I honestly don't know that he has so many options, you know. But I know it's gonna be a tough fight, man. It's gonna be a tough, tough fight. Um, but I know he's working hard. He's working hard, and and I'm looking forward to it, man. A, a Dustin Poirier fight is always a, an amazing fight to watch. You know, you're gonna get excited. Um, what a what a treat we have, right? For the, for that day, um, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be good. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And we definitely have a uh, a treat. And I'd like to see Dustin win. And then I'd like to see the trilogy with him and Max at 55, put the BML title on the line, put the lightweight belt on the line. But uh, we have a treat on June 21st in Salt Lake City. You're taking on Rob Wilkinson. Josh Lavera, I always appreciate your time. What should the fans and the world and Rob Wilkinson expect from you in this fight? Just expect a happy guy, man. Bless and I've been working my ass off, man, and um, enjoying life at the same time. But just expect me to go bring the fight out of him. You know, I'm not looking to to just ha like let happen what he does to people. That's not part of my agenda at all. You know, I'm going to treat him accordingly and uh, I'm going to make him work. You know, I think I think when you look at it, you know, people probably think I'm maybe I'm maybe he's he's too much for me or maybe he's going to create this pressure on me you know i don't care at all man you know i'm going to get after him and uh i'm looking for the finish or well, i'm looking to fight all all three rounds but um we're going to we're going to get after it man the, the same way I, I i got after Saudi Boo, even though it was fast but um i wasn't playing man i wasn't playing that night i'm not going to play i'm not going to be playing around june 21st I cannot wait. The world cannot wait. Live on ESPN Plus Friday, June 21st from Salt Lake City. Hope I'm there. If not, obviously be watching. The world will be watching second round of this PFL tournament. Josh Silvera, hopefully we don't go as long as we did uh, in between our conversations. I uh, always appreciate your time, your father's time, and uh, all the best to you, man. I, I can't wait to see you in there on, on June 21st. Yes, sir, man. Thank you so much. And it was good talking to you, Mike, and, and we'll keep in touch, my brother. Thank you. For sure. Peace.